What's up, YouTube? It's your late Bloomer action figure reviewer, Pearson Pencils here, and today we are checking out a video game action figure, Fortnite's Ghost Brutus. Admittedly, I don't know anything about Mr. Brutus here because I've never played any versions or the game Fortnite at all. Uh, it's something that's definitely on my bucket list. Uh, the game looks amazing. Um, there's a few characters I actually do have from uh, Fortnite from the other companies like McFarlane Toys and Jazzwares. Jazzwares being the mini uh, that I have the collection of Fortnite. And um, the Hasbro figures are actually catching up to it in my collection. But moving along, he's been released earlier in the 2022 year. He comes in with 20 points of articulation. He stands shy of six and three quarter inches. He comes with six accessories and some assembly required. He was made with a mixture between hard and soft plastics. The head, torso, legs and arms being the hard plastic and his hands and jacket, tie and part of his helmet being of a soft plastic. His tie being of a different shade than the rest of his white suit is one of the very minor problems that I have with this figure, which isn't really a big deal. Uh, he doesn't have any pegs in his uh, feet, and uh, he has really, really thin legs. Uh, his head has a, a, an interesting side-to-side -side pivot that I don't usually see in action figures. He has very limited vertical movement, but he has a lot of range when it comes to tilting his head and turning it 360. The helmet prohibits a lot of the vertical movement, but it still looks cool as hell, though. So we're just going to spin that around there. Is it just me or is, uh you know, when it comes to making these characters with suits, they're hard to articulate. But when it comes to Brutus Ghost here, he's actually not hard to articulate. With his bulky arms, he does have 360 shoulder movement. He has uh, the shoulder swivel. He has double jointed elbows. And, of course, he has the um, that funny, weird... Um, Two different risk articulations I keep talking about with certain figures. The Punisher has it. He has it. Lady Deathstrike has it. His hands, as mentioned earlier, are of the soft plastic, which is for holding the handles of his minigun that he comes with in his arsenal, which was a bold and smart move on Hasbro's part with that. And I love that. And though the spotlight is on Hasbro with uh, Brutus Ghost here. I just want to point out that I wish that Jazzwares, as amazing as their figures are, they had a problem with their finger articulation and it gets points taken off of that. Now his jacket is of a flexible soft plastic and it, it, it doesn't really prohibit the movement too much. It's just when you try to bend him back, he doesn't move as much as he does when you have the ab crunch. He has wasteful chasing and he can do the Van Damme split. He has thigh joints. He has double joints and knees. And he has an ankle pivot. These are really good features for his legs to be so thin. I'm actually surprised that they pulled it off. He doesn't have the toe articulation. I think it would be foolish to add that anyway. Um, his pant leg limits some of the ankle pivot. But with him having such issues with his thin legs, you don't want to put too much articulation in places where it's not needed and it's going to hinder the figure in the first place. So getting into his accessories, Brutus Ghost comes with this backpack, which is a standard thing amongst all characters. It's probably a general feature that all Fortnite characters have. I don't think I'm really going to use it. it it's okay. I found out that this is the way that you put the backpack on them because I could have easily put it upside down. So thankfully, I figured that out. Moving along, Brutus Ghost comes with two up close and personal blunt objects like this hammer here. And his hands hold his weapons very well, whether they are his up close and personal weapons like his hammer. And you could just easily slide that in. His fingers are going to give way and he's going to hold that and it's not going to be loose. It's nice and tight in his hands. He also comes with this jagged cleaver. This thing is, looks like something out of Friday the 13th. So we're going to put that in his left hand. And both hands, they hold the weapons very well. So setting the figure aside, we're going to get into the other accessories that Buddhist comes with. Like this target range. 
Uh, it has five bullet holes in it, and it's very basic and minimal to put together. It comes apart at the base, and it's two pegs that snap onto the actual target. So I'm going to take that off here and show you. There's two holes and inserts, and um, the detailing is it's just a simple range. There's no detail on the back. But, you know, putting it back together, it has two pegs. You want to match those up with the holes, and you just want to press that together. It stays nice and firm. And at the base, there's a groove that you want to look out for. And then you want to take the plank and look at the groove on the plank and match them together. And there you have it. It's very simple, very minimal. Please don't try to put it upside down because it's not going to work. Uh, and the metal that it's supposed to be is, you know, it's not balanced. But let's take a look at this badass artillery chest that Brutus Ghost comes with, with his emblem on the top of the chest. Uh, the chest, however, is not unique to Brutus Ghost, I believe, even though I haven't played the game, so it doesn't make any sense to say that I believe it, but it's a, it's a it's an incredible accessory for him to have because he comes with two guns, his minigun and his rifle. And let's get into that right now. So the molding that his rifle sit in is of a hard plastic. And ironically, his rifle, for good reason, is of a soft plastic. So you're not going to break that barrel on the floor if you accidentally drop it because it's soft and flexible. So not quite getting to the minigun just yet. I just want to remove that away from the chest and just to show you that there is no hidden accessories, even though it would have been cool, but you actually can store his hammer and his cleaver into the bottom underneath the chest. Uh, so you choose, should you choose to do so, but getting to the main event, we're looking at this minigun, which comes in three different pieces. That's his handle. And that's the six barrels, which isn't overly detailed, uh, just some molding uh, details. It, it does have a crosshair on there, and the, the six barrels have, like, the, the molded in barrel tips. It's not actually hollow. So going on to the main piece of the minigun, uh, he has a two different handles. One that's actually flexible onto the main piece here. And these pieces, I'm not exactly sure what they are, but they are of a flexible plastic. So just in case you drop it, they're not going to break off. It's flexible. So that's good engineering on Hasbro's part for that. This here, it, it doesn't move. It's just uh, probably just for decoration. Uh, it would have been cool if that did move. I'm not exactly sure what that part's called. And what I think it is, I don't want to say it because it kind of sounds like a chicken or something derogatory. So we'll just leave that out. So now we're going to assemble this minigun. You want to look for the grooves here on the main piece, and you want to insert the barrel here at this point. So once that's inserted, you have the rotation of the six barrels. And the one thing that's kind of a nuisance is seeing that there's like some type of plastic that's sticking upward from one part of the six barrels that's supposed to be at sight. But I'll let that slide. So... Now we're just going to take the handle and you want to make sure that the button is sticking upward once you insert it into the other part of the minigun in the back. There's a small peg hole and that just plugs in there and it's going to be nice and firm and then there you have it. It's complete. And of course, once it's assembled, it's not going to fit back in its molding any other way. You can't have it partially um, assembled and then try to fit it back in there. You have to disassemble it all the way. It looks like it's going to fit in there, but even if you try to put it back in the chest, it's not going to fit in there properly. So I'm going to demonstrate that. It it doesn't really close and you won't be able to get those latches back on there to close and secure the chest. Looking at the still shots, I'm just saying it's all about the minigun. I mean, he's cool with the rifle, and I would say a close second is his hammer and... Why in the heck did you capture this angle, Jeffrey? Something was wrong with my jetpack and he was going to fix it with his hammer. Now people are thinking that I'm cowering in fear. Uh, you were. No, I wasn't. Bravo. Well, you can do better? Show me.
So getting into the final thoughts of the figure, I would say Hasbro's line of Fortnite figures are at the top of the mountain when it comes to comparing with Jazzwares uh, Fortnite figures like the Scavenger here or McFarlane Toys' uh, Fortnite figures. Uh, so here I have the Scavenger and I say he loses points because of his finger joints. And here is the McFarlane Toys Vendetta uh, here where he loses mad points because he's in a 7 inch figure bracket. Most f action figures are like of around a 6 inch realm. You can kind of get away with it but He's kind of top heavy and his toe joints make him fall over. It's a miracle that he's actually standing up perfect now. So you can see that this one from Jazzwares is like around six inches and he's practically seven inches. And, you know, that they, they, they kind of kill my vibe when I wanted to do some creativity with all the other figures in the arsenal. But moving along, it I mean, it is what it is. Hasbro got it. And and with this mini gun here, with this accessory, it's icing on the cake. And I just want to point out that the rifle that Brutus comes with in his chest, um, all of the characters may have that as like a standard weapon. Um, I will be reviewing uh this vendetta and scavenger in later reviews. Um, like, like I said, these are amazing figures up until a certain point with when they get to foolish decisions with like this finger joints that doesn't hold any weapons or a figure being top heavy like McFarlane toys and they have toe pivot, you, you know, you just want to move on to like what's the best thing and Hasbro takes it. And finally, his suit is white. I mean, it's white. The, you know, the, and his tie is like off white. I kind of wish that they, they would have made it the same color as his tie. But like this thing is like you want to it makes you feel like you want to have a magic eraser handy and on deck at all times to make sure there are no scuffs and no smudges of any kind to, you know, dirty his suit. But with that being said, folks, I appreciate you coming and checking out my channel, checking out the figures. Always more stuff to come. And as always, don't forget to be awesome. Love you guys and peace. Do the YouTube things like comment, share, and subscribe.